All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the first video regarding my Arduino robot arm project. And during this video, I'll first go over uh, the mechanical design of the robot itself here in SolidWorks and then talk about a couple of things uh, regarding this project. So I am planning on making a second video after this one uh, in which I'm going to go over the control box and the softwares that are running this arm. But for now, I'll just concentrate on the arm itself. Uh, now, this has been a work in progress for the past year. And during that time, I've made a handful of different mechanical designs, uh, out of which the latest one that you see on the screen is something that I'm happy with. So uh, what I've got here is a six degrees of freedom robotic arm, and it has been driven by six stepper motors. Now, all of the motors are open loop motors, and there are limit switches that are used for calibrating the robot. Now, when I was designing this robot, there were some key things that I wanted uh, to accomplish with it. Uh, one of them being uh, that I wanted the robot to be as accurate as possible, whilst still being relatively cheap to build. So all of the stepper motors in here um, are basically from Stepper Online, Amazon, Banggood.com, as well as all the hardware such as the belts and the pulleys. Uh, those are all basically 3D printer parts um, that are very common and easy to get to. Um, uh, aside of that, all of the other parts, um, all the bearings, and the bolts and nuts are just from my local hardware store and from Amazon. So um, let's go over the uh, features of the robot and the mechanical bit. All right, now the upper parts of the robot have been hidden and what's currently visible is the base of the robot. So this is the stationary part that the robot is standing on. And what is in here is a NEMA 17 stepper motor, and it has a 16 tooth pulley, the GT2 belt, and there is a 100 tooth pulley on the other side. Now, um, I'm gonna make a quick section view of this, like so. And here you can see the, um, let me go here. Here you can see the insides of the base. So there are two uh, ball bearings, which have an inside diameter of 50 millimeters. And then there is a one uh, thrust bearing in here. So there is a 50 millimeter aluminum tube that has been fixed to the robot and that 15 millimeter tube comes all the way down and through these two ball bearings. And those two bearings are the ones that keep the robot correctly orientated. Uh, this thrust bearing here is just used to take the uh, mass of the robot so that it can rotate smoothly. All right, now let's continue the, the second joint of the robot arm. So this joint rotates the first actual arm. And uh, what is in here? Here is the 80 tooth pulley that you can see, uh, excuse me, 100 tooth pulley that you could see on the bottom part. And that has been fixed to this uh, structure here where the first arm is mounted. And I'm gonna start by making a section view on this side and showing you what's inside there. So what we've got is uh, another 15 millimeter aluminum tube and it's been fixed to the robot arm in here. Uh, now in this rotational or this rotating base part, um, there is, or well, there are two ball bearings which have an inner diameter of 15 millimeters. All right, now to the actual uh, drive part of joint two, so the rotation of the first arm. Um, I'm gonna first hide this cover part and there is a 3D printed 
HGT, uh, HTD3 um, 80 tooth pulley in here and there is a 16 tooth pulley back here. There's also two 608 bearings so these are um, 8 millimeters by 22 by 7 millimeter bearings, uh, very basic ones. And those are in here so that uh, when the belt loops around the 80 tooth gear, it will then um, loop around these ball bearings right here and then to the 16 tooth pulley. And this was done so that the opening angle of the belt wouldn't be um, as big. Because I was worried that it was going to slip um, back here in the 16 tooth. What is driving this is a NEMA 17 stepper motor which has a 5 to 1 gearbox. Alright, now going to the actual first arm and the J3 motor. On the screen you can see the first arm part. So here's the 80 tooth pulley that is that rotates this whole arm. And then I'm gonna hide this real quick. Here we have for the J3 movement, we have a NEMA 17 stepper motor, just a regular one without a gearbox, and it has a 16 tooth pulley, and then there is a 100 tooth 3D printed pulley up here. And again, there are two idler gears just to close the belt so that the opening angle won't be so big because again I was worried it was going to slip here but um, this is the first arm and um, this pulley will be connected to a housing which will um, have bearings inside it and that will host the third um, or the second arm so um, the rest of the axis and we're going to go through it in a second. Um, I'm just going to quickly make a little section cut here and show you that inside um, inside of this arm there are two 608 bearings. So again, um, 22, 8x22 by 7 bearings and there's a regular M8 bolt going uh, through it all and it's fastened from the other side with a nut. All right, so here is the last bit of this robot arm. So this is the arm number two, and it houses the joints four, five, and six, and the corresponding motors for them. Um, now this middle part right here is the mount for this arm. So this one connects to the 100 tooth pulley, uh, and the M8 bolt uh, fastens to this nut right here. And this um, mount, it has two bearings again inside of it. Let me just quickly make a section view here. So there are two bearings inside of it, again, a 15 millimeter inside diameter, and there is a aluminum tube with a diameter of 15 millimeters inside of it. Um, there is a 60 tooth pulley back here and uh, an, adap an adapter flange and then a round NEMA 14 stepper motor back here. All these three components are fixed to a one single unit and this adapter flange is then fitted with a bolt so that it's connected to the 50mm tube. So they'll rotate uh, as a single solid, uh, solid unit. Here up front, the last arm part, so this big um, red part up in the front, uh, there's also a connection hole there, so there's a hole on the print and then there is a hole on the aluminum tube and those two are fitted together again. So these parts are always rotating uh, in sync. Um, pardon me, that's not fixed for some reason. But anyway, so all these should be uh, rotating as a one single unit. Now, the motor driving this rotation is the J4 motor. So there is a NEMA 14 stepper motor back here, which again has a 16 tooth pulley. And that's the motor that makes the rotation happen. Uh, now back here, this round NEMA 14 stepper, um, it actually 
will be connected to this uh, five millimeter axle that goes all the way through inside the 15 millimeter tube. And the axle goes all the way up front. There is a small support bearing up here, uh, after which there is a 16 tooth pulley again. Now, the belt from this 16 tooth pulley will be rotated 90 degrees. So there are two idler pulleys in here that are slightly, uh, slightly chamfered. And the belt actually loops around these two idlers and then to this um, 32 tooth pulley up here in the front. And now this pulley is connected to this axle that's inside of it. And the axle is actually connected to this J6 housing up here. So what it does is that the NEMA 14 stepper motor back here, the round one, actually controls the rotation of this um, housing up front, which has the J6 stepper motor inside of it. And the reason that it's done this way is to have the have as much weight as possible as far back as possible. Uh, so when the rubber arm is extended, um, these two motors that are heavier will be way closer to the base than, for example, if they were mounted uh, up here somewhere. And the only heavy part in this arm is actually this um, NEMA 8 stepper motor, and I believe that only weighs about 60 grams, so it's not that much. All right, now that is the overview of uh, the functions on this robot arm, and there are also um, five limit switches fitted into the robot arm. Um, the first axis limit switch is actually mounted here on the side, and that is not in the SOLIDWORKS model, but uh, once I make a video about the real one, I'll show you where it is located. Um, the J, uh, J2 axis limit switch is in here, so when the arm rotates back, uh, it hits this lever. Same thing with J3, there is a bolt hole up here um, where there's an M3 bolt, and when this arm rotates back, it eventually hits this limit switch in here. Now, the last rotational bit has a bolt as well, and once it's rotated far enough, it'll start hitting the limit switch up here. And then also the housing will be hitting this limit switch up here, so that when J5 is rotated back, it'll fit, hit the limit switch. And the idea behind these limit switches is that having open loop steppers, so these steppers don't know their position when the robot is turned on. So the robot is actually being calibrated uh, with uh, hitting the limit switches of each axis. So it basically works just like a 3D printer, print, a 3D printer would, if you're familiar with those ones. Um, the calibration of joint six, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it. I might fit a limit switch up here or just leave it to be manually calibrated. Uh, I don't know yet, we'll see. And yeah, a couple more things. So this arm has been printed almost completely. Um, I'm only missing a couple of bolts to be able to mount the J4 motor back here. I don't have uh, correct size bolts. And also I'm still waiting to receive the J6 axis motor, so this NEMA 8 motor. Uh, it's been shipped and I'm waiting uh, for it to get here. And once it gets here, I'll start prototyping this housing around it and then print it and assemble the robot. But as you've seen on the intro, the base parts and the two arms of the robot have actually been built and they are functioning right now uh, like they should be. So yeah, once I get all the parts that I still need, I'm going to be completing this whole arm and then make a video about it. So that is it for this overview of the arm, and I am making a second part, as I said, and I'll go over the controlling software, both the GUI on the computer and the Arduino code. And I'll also go over the control box that houses all the electronics and go over and how they work. And 
Well, thank you for watching. And if you have any comments or questions about this, uh, leave them below. I'll go through them and see you in the next video. Thanks.